And thank you for joining IU South Bend for our last virtual Q&A event about fall 2020. Uh, my name is Paige Risser. I'm the Director of Communication and Marketing for IU South Bend. And on behalf of my colleagues, I'd like to welcome you to what we expect will be a very informative hour. This is the last in our series of four events of similar format that were held every Thursday at five, um, starting four weeks ago. Uh, today's video Q&A is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel after this for any time viewing for those of you who can't attend our Thursday evening sessions or who weren't able to um, in the past. Uh, our time together today will offer you the opportunity to hear from IU South Bend leadership on a broad range of topics relevant to returning to campus this fall. Some of you may have already submitted questions when you registered and we will address those. And if you'd like to submit a question during your time today, um, please do so via the chat button at the bottom center of your screen uh, that says Office of the Chancellor. Uh, additionally, if there are participants tonight who require Spanish language or closed captioning accommodations, please also connect with us via the chat function and we'll make sure to assist. Uh, today we have with us campus leaders from academic, student services, housing, facilities, and financial aid here to provide updates about the fall semester and answer as many questions as we can. For those questions we may not be able to answer, we'll provide answers in upcoming communications and on IU South Bend's Fall 2020 website. And now I'd like to um, introduce Kathy Buckman, our Associate Vice Chancellor for Enrollment Management, to offer some remarks this evening. Kathy. So good afternoon or good early evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Welcome to IU South Bend. Uh, I'd like to begin by presenting some remarks on behalf of our Chancellor, Susan Elrod. Uh, she wanted me to share a little bit of information about IU South Bend's approach to the 2021 academic year um, and to convey um, some of our priorities, which are really pretty simple. Um, our priorities are, first and foremost, the health and safety of the IU South Bend community and making sure that students can continue to receive a quality IU education. So our faculty have been very busy um, over the summer um, developing quality course content and instructional practices for a range of, of um, delivery methods that I'm sure you'll hear about later in the session. All of our student services are prepared to support students this fall, whether it be in person or online. So for those of you who are planning to be on campus, um, a variety of measures are being put in place to help ensure your health and safety. And among these are providing and requiring cloth face coverings for all students, faculty, staff, and visitors, uh, which will be worn at all times. Um, we also are enacting vigorous cleaning procedures and also reducing the number of people on campus at any one time. There will be signage to inform you about public health guidance and uh, any restrictions that are in place as far as um, spacing and, and distancing that would be required. And additionally, all IU students, faculty and staff will have access to a virtual symptom checker, virtual screening and the COVID-19 testing if needed. Um, all members of the IU community will also need to review and sign an agreement committing to individual safety practices before returning to campus. So if you haven't done that already, you know, be sure you do that. I understand that you'll be able to log in a certain number of times. I believe it's five um, if you haven't signed that agreement and then you'll be prompted and uh, to, to do so in order to continue. We want to assure you that IU is carefully monitoring the pandemic will be prepared to alter how our courses are delivered should the need arise for the health and safety of the IU South Bend community. We're committed to keeping you informed of any updates that might occur and we will continue to communicate with you in the weeks and the months ahead. And with this, we, we hope that we've set your mind at ease that we're managing this situation with health and safety at the forefront. If the situation changes, we're prepared to adjust accordingly. So with all that said, I, I'd like to shift from the from health and safety and the pandemic and just take just a couple of minutes to talk about college in general, because this is a very exciting time for us. We certainly hope it's an exciting time for you as well. Like uh, many of my colleagues, uh, those of us 
who have spent entire lives working in higher education. I, I say we believe wholeheartedly in the value of a college degree and the difference it can make to an individual and, and to a family. So first of all, we'd like to congratulate you for making the decision to continue your education, especially given these, these very challenging times. Um, truly, you've taken an important step towards earning a degree, you know, uh, uh, a career, and a rich and rewarding life. And when we talk about a rich and rewarding life, we really don't mean in terms of um, money or income earned, although um, I have to tell you that the average four-year college graduate will earn a million dollars more um, in his or her lifetime than a person with just a high school diploma. And that extra million dollars certainly opens up all kinds of opportunities in terms of how you spend your time, recreation, and hobbies, and travel, and, and, and overall health and, and happiness. So certainly additional income is a, is a significant, powerful incentive for getting a degree. But you know what a lot of us really mean when we talk about a rich and rewarding life is, is much more about what happens as you attend college as you progress through your degree, how the world expands and opens up to you um, as you go through college, you know, how you're exposed to new and, and uh, different people and ideas and possibilities for what you're gonna do with your life, you know, how you're gonna live your life to the fullest, what type of a career will you choose? Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to attribute this next statement to the right person. I believe it was one of my favorite professors, April Ladinsky, Dr. April Ladinsky. And I, I believe that I, I heard her over, um, as I was uh, listening to her present to a group of prospective students. And, and she said that college is the place where you become the person you want to be. And for some people, for many people, college is the place where you discover the person you could be. I always like that, and I've remembered it, you know, throughout many years. Those of us who work in higher education, we know this to be true. We see it happen all the time with our students, and often we're able to see strengths and characteristics and skills in our students that sometimes they, they don't see in themselves, uh, initially anyway. And that sort of situation gets our hearts racing because we know that with commitment and with effort, you can bring out the best aspects of yourself and that will tend to lead you to a more successful and fulfilling life. And that's really what we want for you. And as an IUSB student, each of you will have access to a team of people um, to support you in your journey. Of course, you'll have an academic advisor, you'll have a success coach, a financial aid counselor, um, career counselors are available, tutors. Um, and above all, you have an incredible faculty to teach and to mentor you. College is a remarkable opportunity, and we are thrilled that you are taking advantage of it. And we certainly hope you will make the most of it. And we will be here to partner with you every step of the way. We miss being with our students and our colleagues. We look forward to having everyone back on campus when the time is right. And in the meantime, we'll do what we need to do to keep moving forward. Again, we're so glad to have you with us. Not only will we get through this very strange time in our history together, but we will learn and we will grow from it uh, and we will keep moving forward. And um, with that, I want to welcome you again to the campus. Um, have a great first year. Um, I am going to turn it back over to Paige to begin the question and answer period. And I hope you'll feel comfortable asking questions. Anything that comes to mind, that's what we're here for. So Paige, you can take it from here. Thanks, Kathy. All right, we had a question submitted about um, meeting with an advisor. Um, I've confirmed my admission and I'm uh, ready to meet with my advisor so I can register for classes. How do I do that? So I'm gonna ask Rick Denny, our Director of Student Support, to please take that question. Rick? Hey, thank you. Yes, we wanna be able to set up an appointment as soon as possible to meet with an advisor so you can register for classes. Probably the quickest way, if you wouldn't mind just uh, sending your name and email in the chat, only us can see that, and then I'll respond during this meeting and give you the link to make the appointment with the advisor and let you know of any other things that you need to get taken care of. All right, thank you, Rick. 
Our next question um, is for Doug McMillan, our um, Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Please explain how hybrid classes work versus online versus web-based. So if you could take us through the course modalities and, and their individual characteristics, that would be great. So uh, in addition to our normal mode of classes, which is face-to-face, -face, we actually have four other modalities that we'll be using uh, this semester. In fact, we've used these before, but they're more prevalent this upcoming semester. Uh, one that's very common is online asynchronous courses. Uh, there's no set time for lectures or interactive exercises, discussion, uh, but there are deadlines for viewing lectures and engaging in such discussions, reviewing a reading, submission of assignments and exams. For, our, for example, for our, uh, most classes, a lot, a lot of them will have it set for Sunday, 11.59 p.m. that you have to get these submitted but you'll have those deadlines set within your Canvas site. Uh, now, in addition to those courses, we also have online synchronous courses. So this is where faculty and students meet online at certain days and times. Uh, and so it's really like a face-to-face -face class, except these are done virtually. Again, you will submit your assignments online. This is what I did in my face-to-face -face classes. Although I had a face-to-face -face class, I'd actually have my uh, students submit their assignments to me, uh, as I said, like Sunday at 11.59. Uh, now, in addition to those modalities, we also have some hybrid courses. So we have the hybrid courses, hybrid asynchronous and synchronous. So this is a combination where you will meet the instructor, for example, for a lecture maybe on Tuesday from 8.30 to 9.15, but then maybe on Tuesday you're doing it online, uh, viewing it synchronously. So that's one possibility. And then you may have some work. Okay, you meet once a week and then you have to turn your, week, uh, your other work in doing asynchronous on your own time as you have to turn it in at a certain time. We also have uh, hybrid uh, courses that are online and in person. So maybe again on a Tuesday from uh, 8.30 to 9.15, you will meet in person. But on a Thursday at the same time, it may be online. And in some courses, we may have it divided up. So a certain group of students is meeting on Tuesday face-to-face -face and online Thursday and vice versa for the other group of students. So that we're able to maintain that uh, social distancing uh, between uh, uh, people. So, excuse me. So those are kind of the uh, uh, course formats we have. Now, there may be some confusion. How do I know when I'm supposed to meet at a particular time? Well, if you go into your student center and look at your schedule, you could pull that up into calendar format. And it will have listed on there the times that you will be involved either meeting in person or a synchronous live meeting. So that is the best avenue to look at it. Also, start going into your Canvas site. Faculty members are already posting their syllabus and their syllabus will detail how they want this class to function. So if they have a hybrid synchronous, asynchronous course, they will tell you exactly how this course is structured and what you need to do. So go ahead and be proactive. Start looking at your Canvas sites. Uh, and if they're not up, they will be up within the next week. So go ahead and get prepared and have a good semester. Thank you, Doug. All right, um, another question about um, what student life will look like on campus this semester. So I'm gonna ask Scott Strittmetter, our Director of Housing and Student Life to take that question, please. Yeah, um, we're excited for the opportunities of how we're going to do um, engagement activities a little bit differently this year than we have in the past. And so, uh, you know, traditionally we would have had our involvement fair the first two days of, of school. Uh, now we're going to do a little bit different. Uh, on Monday, we're going to be doing some giveaways at the center of campus at the uh, um, fountain. And uh, so make sure that uh, our students uh, stop by and get their free giveaways. On Tuesday night, we have the first of uh, two drive-in movie theaters. Um, and so I hope to release the titles of the movies we're gonna show uh, beginning next week on Monday. Um, but I'm pretty excited about what our students have uh, planned for that. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to be doing uh, a virtual games uh, where uh, students can jump on and interact with one another and have a fun time playing some Jackbox games. Thursday, we're going to be doing our second uh, drive-in movie theater right out inside in the SAC parking lot. Uh, so, you know, you load up into the car, bring some snacks for yourselves, and uh, check out the movies. And then on Friday, we're going to do another interactive virtual 
engagement where we're going to do one night werewolf where uh, our students are going to get together and try and figure out who the werewolf is uh, before they get our villagers. And so we're really excited for that. Um, that second week, I know we're going to have a virtual comedian on campus. Uh, we've got some interactive craft nights that we're going to be looking at. Um, and then uh, we're actually going to be asking our students and student clubs to uh, be creative in how we create safe and engaging face-to-face uh, -face programs throughout the semester. And so we're going to have to do things a little bit differently, but I think actually this is going to, um, moving forward, I think this is going to allow us to do a lot more things uh, once everything settles down. So uh, we will definitely have student life, we will have student clubs, we will have programs, um, and so I'm excited for that. Thanks, Scott. And what was the date, again, that those, those um, activities start? Oh. Sorry, uh, so the first day of classes, August 24th through the, uh, all the way to that Friday um, and the 28th. And then uh, the comedian, I, uh, I don't wanna give the wrong date. So until I uh, have that firmly in hand, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say that, but uh, it will be that second week uh, of classes. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm getting a question about employment on campus. Can I have a job on campus? So I'm gonna ask Kim Moore, our Director of Career Services, if she has um, some uh, information about students who perhaps are looking for a on-campus job. Yes, you can definitely have employment on campus. Um, closer to the beginning of the semester, the jobs will be posted so you can apply there is a title on one that's called IUSB Careers, and you want to go there and update your profile and click that you are interested in on-campus employment so you will be updated as jobs get posted. All right, and that's on one IU? Yes, that's on one IU. Bursar, Linda Lurk, Lucas, um, about um, when students will get the bill for their classes. Thank you, Paige. That's a very timely question as uh, e-bills for the fall semester will be sent out this Thursday, uh, a week from today, August 20th, and they'll be sent to your student center. Uh, the due date will be September 10th. And the Bursar's office has been posting information on the daily Titan uh, e-newsletter. So you may want to go back if you've been ignoring those and um, pull up uh, today. I think there was a, an update on that with the uh, e-billing information and the payment information and setting up payment plans if, um, if you want to do that as well. Thank you, Linda. Um, Doug, I have another question for you about um, classes ending at Thanksgiving. Can you talk a little bit about the adjusted academic calendar? Yeah, so at IU South Bend, uh, the faculty have decided that we would maintain our normal 16-week uh, calendar as the default. So as Scott mentioned, we begin August 24th, and most of our classes will actually end uh, the third week of, or the second week of December, so three weeks after Thanksgiving. However, there is the IU mandate that all classes after Thanksgiving must be online. And so all of our classes that are face-to-face, -face, hybrid, wherever they may be before Thanksgiving, will transfer to online afterwards. And so the faculty already know this. Some will continue their courses, maybe in a synchronous manner. Uh, some will actually be, uh, have creative solutions. Perhaps there'll be some projects that I want you to do, but all of them will be geared to make sure that you're uh, getting the learning outcome that that course is designed uh, to present. Now, some of our courses, that was our default, but we did give the faculty the ability if they want to end their classes, at, online classes at 13 weeks, they can. And so some have elected to do that. And you'll see that again in your, uh, on, uh, in your uh, student center if you go look. Uh, however, we have to meet our number of hours. We have required hours for a course if it's three credit hours, for example. And so there'll be a little bit more additional work throughout the semester for those, for those shorter classes. Uh, so some will end there. Most will actually go the entire 16 weeks. 
And we also have our normal eight week classes. So some people will be signed up for a class that begins the first eight weeks and some may be on the second eight weeks. Again, if you're in a second eight week course, those three weeks after Thanksgiving will in fact begin, will convert to online. Uh, we will be delayed uh, in the spring. We will start our spring semester uh, online, fully online, uh, third week of uh, January. And then after three weeks transition, uh, given this, uh, if we can, uh, back to the, the uh, faculty members' preference, face-to-face, -face, hybrid, or online synchronous, those type of courses. So uh, most of the class will be 16 weeks, transitioning to the three weeks uh, online after Thanksgiving. Some may be abbreviated. So again, look into your student center, check those syllabi, make sure you know exactly how your course is structured. Thank you, Doug. I have a technology question, so I'm going to ask Bill Mikulak from um, our University Information Technology team to take this. Um, if a student does not have a computer, is there something that IU South Bend can do to help? Uh, yes. Hey, everybody. Uh, there's two different things you can do. We do have computers across the campus. Uh, we're trying to de-densify where they are so that you'll have plenty of space. Um, and we have computers like in the basement of Northside and in education and arts. Uh, they're uh, available whenever you can get into the buildings. Uh, many of them do have uh, webcams and uh, microphones. Um, so you can use them uh, even to zoom in for a class. Uh, and if you want to have something a little more permanent, we sell uh, surplus equipment at the bookstore on campus. Uh, and we do that on a pretty regular basis. So just keep your eye on the bookstore. Uh, they're not the latest and the greatest computers, but they work well they're, and they're uh, very uh, low priced. Uh, they would be probably $100 or less. Uh, and then uh, we're constantly looking to see if there are other things we can do. But those two items are definitely available. Thanks, Bill. I have a follow up. Um, question for you um, about how students can get their crimson card. Can you take That's that? That's a popular question. Uh, we're uh, organizing drive ups to pick up your crimson card. We had one last night um, that we had about 80 people show up to get crimson card. Our next one is tomorrow. That'd be Friday, August the 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They're located uh, just south of the Education and Arts Building in the parking lot there. Uh, we're going to have more of those events. Uh, the dates have not been announced yet, but uh, when they are announced, we'll put it in the Daily Titan. We'll let students out, you know, um, other folks on campus. Uh, and then if uh, you want to make an appointment to pick up your Crimson Card, we'll start accepting appointments next week, which would be the week of August 17th. Uh, do keep in mind that you have to be enrolled in order to be able to pick up your Crimson card. All right, thank you, Bill. All right, I think our next question um, is uh, gonna go to Aaron Brown in our Titan Success Center. So the question is about um, transitioning to college and learning strategies um, and how this semester it's going to be a bit different. And so how, how can um, you and your team support students as they're um, transitioning to college? Thanks, Paige. Um, so the Titan Success Center's name of our game is to help with students uh, with that transition every year. And so this year is no different in terms of the ways we're going to help students. So we're going to be there to answer questions. We're going to be there to meet with students virtually um, or once it's safe on campus, one on one, um, to go through the procedures, to talk about different learning strategies, to connect students to different resources across campus and the community if needed. Um, I would say that we probably, with learning strategies, we'd be working with um, the Learning Center and Academic Centers for Excellence, which does tutoring. Um, and we would probably be working with some study smarter coaches through the learning center and possibly write well coaches through the learning center. Um, we also do lots of help with facilitating conversations between students and faculty. 
So if you're having any um, issues your first days of college up through when you graduate, we are here to help you. So don't be afraid to ask, don't be afraid to call us, email us, come into our office once everything is open and we are happy to help. Thanks, Erin. All right, moving to financial aid. Um, someone wants to know if financial aid will appear on the bill, the imagining the bursar bill, and, um, and wanting to know if you can buy books before financial aid comes through. So um, Kathy Miller from our financial aid team, can you help us with that one, please? Hi, I sure can. So financial aid, assuming they have done everything that um, was on their to-do list, will actually then show as anticipated financial aid when that first bill is generated next week. So when they log into the pay versus our bill app in their one account or their student center, it will say my anticip your anticipated financial aid is this amount, whether it's the grants, scholarships, student loans, all of that will show there. Um, and if students are needing their financial aid to help pay for their books, um, obviously we don't transfer financial aid over until the second week of the semester, which is August 31st, they can add Crimson Cash through their Crimson Card account and add that charge to their bursar bill so then that way they can then use the funds that they put on their Crimson Card to go to the bookstore, whether it's in person or online, to purchase their books that way. Then once we do transfer the financial aid over, it will pay the Crimson Cash along with all of their other charges on their account, assuming they've completed that Title IV authorization allowing financial aid to pay for all charges on their account. Okay. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, all right, question about testing. Um, uh, we, our questioner says, our friend, my friend is coming to live in housing, has been told she will take a test upon arrival. Can you provide details? Uh, Scott Stripmatter, could you tell us about on arrival testing at the River Crossing apartments, please? Sure, I'd be glad to. So yes, if uh, you are a student and you are living in campus housing, uh, we will be doing on-site rapid testing. Uh, we are also asking uh, that all of our residents uh, try to do a um, pre-arrival uh, test and submit that uh, to uh, our uh, site that is found on 1IU to kind of self-report your results. Uh, the uh, reasoning being is, is that we really just want to make sure that we start the year as uh, sure as possible that we're COVID free. So not only do we want our residents to do a pre-arrival test and report that, uh, when they get onto campus, they will, uh, before they get checked in, they'll have to do a, uh, a test. Um, if you are not a housing student, you do not need to be tested before you come to campus. Um, it's just that with the close proximity and um, the concentration of students there, we just want to be safe uh, and making sure that our community is uh, being taken care of. Um, and so in answer to the question, if you're not living in IUSB housing, you do not have to have a COVID test prior to coming to campus. Thanks, Scott. All right, Doug, um, I think we have another one for you. Um, if a student has signed up for a course that's hybrid, but wants uh, to really just focus on that course being only online or wants to be only online, is, um, is that possible? Can this happen if the course is not technically online, but hybrid, um, how, what would you recommend the student do? Uh, the, the first recommendation I would give to a student is to reach out uh, to the faculty member. We've asked our faculty to be as flexible as possible uh, for their courses. Uh, in some courses, this, this is, they're able to do this. Some courses, based on learning outcomes, they may not be able to do that accommodation, but certainly reach out to the faculty member uh, and see if they would be willing to accommodate you in terms of just allowing you to do online or at least decrease the number of frequency time uh, meetings on campus. Uh, if you have an underlying health condition, you can certainly ask for an accommodation. Uh, and then you know, the other thing you can do as well, we still have time is see if you can, if you can't get these, that, that done or if faculty member is unwilling or can't make that accommodation for you, uh, see if you can find another course that is online. If it's not the identical course, maybe it's a course that satisfies the same educational requirement that you're looking for. 
Uh, it's difficult if it's a course for your major, but if it's a general education course, you may be able to find, there's still some courses where you can find some flexibility to enroll in that particular course. Thank you, Doug. All right, um, question for our director of facilities, Mike Prater. Um, what kinds of things are being done to ensure better health and safety measures on campus? Yes, we have gone through. Yes, we have gone through all the classrooms and worked on uh, social distancing. So when you go into a classroom, you'll notice that the seats are spread out. You'll see a red dot either on the fixed seating or on the floor underneath the chairs. That's to help us maintain the six foot social distance between uh, participants. The students also, or the uh, instructor also has a clear zone along the board and at the teaching podium in front of each room. Also in each room you'll find cleaning supplies and we offer the ability for you to clean your way into a room, that way you protect yourself, as well as when you are getting ready to leave the area, if you would again wipe it down, that assists in protecting the IU community uh, from anything that you could have carried into the site. So uh, that's done. Um, we have gone through and IT has worked to set up various rooms for use with Zoom so that students that are on campus, if they need the opportunity to go take a virtual class, they'll have that room that they can go to or have a socially distanced area so they can go to and that avoids the need to sit on a park bench or sit in your car using your phone. You'll have the opportunity to uh, either grab one of the IT computers that is at a kiosk or go into a Zoom room and use your own laptop to uh, take your class. Um, we are doing increased cleaning. We have refocused what is going on with the custodial and facility staff, and we will hit bathrooms and high touch surfaces, doorways, those things uh, three times a day. You'll also see as you go into the different buildings, you will see a plethora of hand sanitizing stations. We installed over 100 of them last week out on campus, and if you're on campus and you notice that they're not available or you're missing some in an area, just let us know and we'll be happy to uh, mobilize and try to get other areas covered. Uh, the mask mandate, we've talked about everybody's receiving masks to uh, before they come to campus, but in case you forget those, each of the departments will have masks available. And shortly, uh, we will have some uh, dispensing boxes that are in each of the buildings so that if you see a visitor or a friend or you forget your own mask, you can point them toward a dispensing box or the nearest department office to uh, pick up a disposable mask so that everybody continues to try to protect the IU community. Uh, you'll also see a lot of signs around about hand washing, social distancing, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, reminding people not to gather. Uh, you'll notice that uh, there's less furniture around. So uh, it's all in this so we can uh, try to get through this as healthy as possible. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Right, I have a question about student um, counseling, and I think Anne, um, Anne, can I send that to you about um, what kind of counseling support will be available for students? Hi, yeah. Um, I know this semester uh, the Student Counseling Center will be available. As of now, they're going to be doing um, every session through telehealth, which is uh, totally confidential. They are not allowing students uh, to come into the counseling center because it's such a small space. However, uh, counselors will be available um, starting as soon as classes start. Uh, you'll have to call in, make an appointment for that, uh, just as you would if you were walking in for an appointment anyway. 
but they'll be up and running and um, there to serve the students that need it. All right, thanks. Um, question about labs. Um, Doug, if you would, um, if, will a chemistry lab be online? How will labs be done and taught? Uh, so yes and no. So there are some labs that will be done online. So I know some of the physics labs, for example, uh, you will be using household project, uh, products or products that are available from the hardware stores and you'll be able to do those labs online. Uh, the chemistry labs uh, at this time are all still being done in person. Uh, however, the mandates remain in place that in, when you're in a laboratory, you have to wear a mask. There will be social distancing. Uh, now, of course, in the chemistry labs, PPE is a mandate already because they're dealing with chemicals and so forth. So you, they all, students already have the goggles. They already have a lab coat uh, or lab apron. So they'll be adding the mask as well. We will be doing social distancing. So typically what we'll do now is uh, the labs will be split up. So if it's a lab of 18 students, uh, there'll be nine students coming in for the first half, nine students the second half, and they'll be given other things also to further the learning outcomes so that they're not losing their lab period. So if you're in a four hour lab period, the first two hours will be there, second two hours will be doing something else with, with respect to that lab, but not in the laboratory uh, itself. And of course, in our laboratories, uh, we do move around. So we'll have to monitor to make sure that students are maintaining social distancing. Fortunately, the, these uh, labs all have uh, vented hoods. So they bring in cold air, the, well, in the winter they bring in cold air uh, and bring it in fresh air, I should say, and then they exhaust the other air back to the uh, atmosphere. And that air turns over rather, rather frequently. So uh, in terms of being worried about the laboratories, uh, even though they'd be face-to-face, -face, working in labs, everything should be uh, fine. I'm not concerned about the, uh, those uh, in terms of COVID-19 uh, exposure there. Great, appreciate that, Doug. I'm gonna ask you one more question um, about uh, pre-arrival testing. At, can we do that at our health, at IUSB's Health and Wellness Center? Oh, so at, at IU in general, uh, we will only be testing for those that are demonstrating uh, symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, and so our Health and Wellness Center will also be doing that. So it'll only be for students, faculty, and staff that are actually demonstrating symptoms. Uh, you can get COVID-19 uh, tests uh, at a variety of uh, air, uh, uh, local places. Uh, if you need to find those, one way to do it is go uh, to the Indiana website, uh, www.coronavirus.indiana.gov, and you can find sites there that are, in fact, administering, administering uh, COVID-19 tests. Great. So coronavirus dot in dot gov. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, let's see. I have a question about um, community engagement and service uh, requirements and how students might be able to conduct community service in a COVID environment. I think Naomi, could you answer that question for us? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, so um, the university typically encourages our students uh, to be engaged in the community and we do that through a variety of service learning um, requirements. This semester um, we are going to be extremely careful about the kinds of service requirements um, that we require of our students. Um, so, for example, much of the service will be done virtually. Um, in the honors program, for example, we are working with our community partners um, to allow students to do their service virtually. Um, we're working with such partners as HealthWin, um, where students will be able to, um, um, uh, to zoom in in order to talk or do oral histories with some of the long-term patients there. The Boys and Girls Club is asking for students um, to read books virtually to students. Um, and so we're being very careful about the kinds of projects that we're assigning to our students. 
Um, there is also a form that our students and the community partner um, will have to review and sign off on if the students are engaged face to face in the community. And the form goes through a variety of social distancing steps um, to make sure that social distancing is being observed, that masks are being worn, um, you know, and a variety of other that uh, contact tracing is in place, etc. And so while there will be um, some service and some community engagement on campus, it will be reduced. Um, and uh, much of it will take place virtually and there will be special procedures in place um, to make sure that our students as well as others in the community are, are maintaining safety um, and following guidance. Thanks, Naomi. Since you're the director of our honors program, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, Sure, I'd love to. Um, we have a very vibrant honors program on our campus, um, one that has grown substantially over the years, and one that um, where the where honor students are really engaged um, in the community. And so um, to join the program, students must have a 3.5 um, cumulative GPA, either a, a high school GPA that's 3.5 or higher, or once they are on our campus, if they have two semesters of a 3.5 GPA, they can apply to the program and join as well. Now, there are many benefits to being in the program. Every student in the program receives a small scholarship from the time they start until the time they finish. Um, our students graduate with a very prestigious IU Honors Diploma that sets them apart um, from other students later on down the road when they're applying for graduate programs and fellowships and internships and uh, professional schools, et cetera. So um, they have an IU Honors Diploma. Um, students also have early registration privileges on campus, meaning that um, they are, honor students are the first undergraduate students that get to um, sign up for their classes each semester. And so they always get the classes they want um, on the days and times that they want them. They're never closed out or waitlisted um, for a course. Um, there are many other um, benefits. They get to work closely with some of the very best faculty at IU South Bend. They work on research projects and other kinds of projects together. And these are the same faculty who will be writing letters of recommendation for them um, later on. Finally, we have an honors, um, what we call our honors living learning community and housing, um, where students, um, honor students get to live in the same building. They get to be roommates with each other, which just further builds that sense of community and camaraderie um, um, between them. And in our administration building, we have an honors lounge, which contributes to that. Um, that honor students can use um, for study purposes, for group meetings, for just um, rest and relaxation as well. So there are many benefits to being in the honors program. Um, I could go on uh, all evening, but I'll stop here. If anyone is interested in joining honors, um, please send an email to onprog at iusb.edu. That's H-O-N-P-R-O-G at iusb.edu. And we'll send you um, information as well as an application so you can join us. We'd, we'd love to have you be a part of the program. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so continuing with the um, activities for students, uh, how about clubs for students? How will those work? So I have um, Jacob Zell, who is part of our student life team. Um, can you answer that for us, Jacob? Yeah, so I do work in housing and student life, um, more on the housing side, but from what I know so far is, um, we'll still be encouraging student clubs to be meeting virtually. So using um, the technology, um, either Zoom or some other software um, of meeting virtually. Um, and then as Scott said earlier, we will be working with clubs to um, still help them facilitate events if they are wanting to do in events in person or virtual events. Um, 
they can contact the Office of Student Life um, and we can help facilitate that. Um, there is a process to having an in-person event approved though. So um, we would have to like help them go through those steps to make sure they're getting their um, event approved. But um, we for sure wanna make sure that clubs are still um, thriving through this time and uh, we wanna support clubs and um, gaining membership as well, so. Thanks, Jacob. Uh -huh. All right, um, I have a follow-up. Doug, I, I know you talked about the academic calendar. Um, follow-up question about um, courses between the fall and spring semesters. Is there yes. um, something to, that you could touch on there, please? Yeah, we do, we do have a gap of three to four weeks uh, this year between the fall and spring semester. So it's starting the spring semester a little later than usual. Uh, so we will have a winter session uh, where a, we'll have a very focused courses, say over a three week period, uh, it can be a three credit hour course. Uh, of course, it will have to be online, but we'll, we are reaching out to the faculty uh, to come up with some creative ideas for courses uh, that they would like to offer over that three week period. Uh, so it'd be an intense three weeks. If a student's taking a course over there, what, we, what we are calling the winter session, you probably just want to do one course. The nice thing is, is that that course will also be considered part of the spring semester in terms of, the, uh, of tuition. So if you have banded tuition, you're taking three credit hours there, nine or 12 credit hours, that will be all considered then as a, uh, the tuition for covering both of those uh, courses or those set of courses. So yeah, we're planning that. Uh, we hope to have the details rolled out here in the next four to six weeks. All right. Appreciate that, Doug. Um, well, I think we are closing in on the end of our questions, but certainly if anyone has any further questions, just chat us and um, let us know um, how we can provide more information if you need. Um, all right, here's one. Um, Another housing question, Jacob. Um, is there a limit to the number of students um, in housing per apartment or room? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, there are um, a limit. So we have apartment style housing. So of course, um, there will only be one person per bedroom. Um, we do have, um, our building set up to where like if it is a four bedroom there will be four residents in that but they like I said they have their e they each have their own bedroom um, and then at most um, two residents will be sharing one bathroom um, for the two bedroom apartments each of those residents will have their own bathroom um, and then we've also done a little bit of work of going through and labeling cabinet spaces and stuff so that we're identifying which bedroom gets which cabinet so um, we're trying to limit the um, sharing of like different materials and stuff like that um, this year as well. But uh, does that answer the question? Yeah. For the most part, okay. All right. Anything else? Oh. Is housing still accepting applications, Jacob? Do you know that? We are still accepting applications. Um, they can be found on um, the housing website. So it's iusb.edu backslash housing. Um, the application is in a PDF form there. There's also a button you can press that says apply now and it'll take you to the house, uh, to the application. Thanks. Yep. Can I still register for courses? I, uh, I I think the answer to that question is yes. Um, is Rick back with us? Um, I am. Okay. Yes, you can absolutely still register for classes. Classes start on Monday, August 24th, so just over a week away, but yes. Uh, your next step would be to make an appointment with an advisor. Uh, probably the best way to do that right now, if you want to call our information center, which is uh, run by current students, 520-5005 and they can let you know how to get that appointment set up. Also be watching your email, both your IU email and personal email. We're gonna have a couple virtual registration events taking place next week. 
And so you could also plug into one of those. But yes, if you're still wanting to come here for the fall semester, we absolutely will get you registered. All right, thank you, Rick. All right, our final question, um, dining options on campus. Mike Prater, can I ask you to take that question? Are, what are the dining options that will be available on campus? Yes, uh, we will have options of, in the grill at the University Center. Uh, you will also notice that that, that area is, is socially distanced for the furnishings there. Uh, most of the meals will be served by Sodexo dining employees. Uh, you'll still have some opportunities to, to pick up grab and go items as well as point out what you want there. Uh, they will package it for you in the, di in the dining area that they are open Monday through Thursday. And also the coffee shop over in Education Arts will be open Monday through Thursday until about, uh, I'm a little off on the time, but I'm thinking coffee shop is open till five on Monday through Thursday. Uh, the dining options on campus are only open until 3.30, Monday through Thursday. So, yes, there's a few options available, not as many as we've had prior, but uh, still available. All right. Well, unless there are any more questions. Well, thank everybody for joining us um, and sending in your, your questions. Um, we encourage you to visit the IU South Bend Fall 2020 Campus Updates page for um, updates and the latest information and monitor your email too so that um, as circumstances might evolve, we'll keep you posted and um, informed and continue to be nimble and provide you the best information possible. Um, as I mentioned, the recording of this event will be on our YouTube channel for future viewing. So again, thank you for, for coming and joining us um, and have a good evening, everybody. <laughs>